uh, the Netherlands. Then we have uh, David Bayard, who is Deputy Head of Mission from the Embassy of France in Sweden, who's going to be telling us about the French-Swedish Innovation Partnership for uh, tech companies. And after that, we're going to have an interview with Charles Bergia, who is the Senior VP of Corporate Strategy at Fingerprints. Uh, and he's going to be discussing the partnership between Fingerprints and Thales. Um, and he's going to be interviewed by Ivan Bochi Wehrman, who is the director of the Business France Nordics office here in Stockholm. And finally, after that, we're going to have a pitch session from eight uh, startups that Mathilde and I are working with as part of our French Tech Days uh, 2021 delegation. These are companies that are seeking to expand their business into the Nordic region. Um, so if any of you are interested in meeting with them one to one after the pitch session tonight, feel free to reach out to Mathilde or myself and we can set up a meeting for you. And we're going to have our contact information on the last slide of this, this presentation, so you'll be able to contact us. And after that, we're going to do a Q&A session to wrap up and we're hoping to keep it within an hour. So I'm going to let uh, Lionel, Baptiste and Frédéric take it away. Great, thank you, Emily. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Lionel, and uh, together with Frédéric and Baptiste, I am a member of La French Tech Nordics. Very happy to have so many of you here tonight. Uh, a little bit about myself, then Frédéric and Baptiste will tell a little bit more about La French Tech, what we do, what you can expect from us, our mission, our objectives. Um, so concerning myself, I moved to Stockholm 18 years ago, so not yesterday, uh, after a bit more than 10 years working at Air France KLM, based here in Stockholm for the Nordics, working mainly with e-commerce. I founded Crunchyroll, uh, which was then startup, becoming now a scale-up. That was six years ago. We are now 10 employees um, and we design white label destination guides and recommendation engines that we license to destination marketing organizations, to airlines, airports, hotel chains, that's for the travel and tourism segment, but also news companies. And yeah, so that's a bit about me. And now I can tell you I'm very glad to be here with you and uh, soon listen to David, to Charles and the eight French companies that we already met actually two, three weeks ago. I'm sure you're going to all have a great time. So I wish you a good evening. Frédéric Baptiste, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Frédéric Esbani, and uh, I'm based in Copenhagen, Denmark. I work for a French uh, startup, uh, well, which is more than 10 years old, uh, specialized in semiconductor design. So we are an engineering company and uh, I'm in charge of the Danish branch, where there are two people only. <laughs> and uh, I've been a little bit active in uh, helping the French tech network uh, build up here in Denmark from 2015, I think. Well, that's pretty much it. Baptiste, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, thanks, Fred. Thank uh, hi, everyone. I'm super happy to be here. Uh, I, uh, I'm based in Stockholm. Uh, come from the, a small village in Provence, as Martin said in the beginning, uh, and yeah, love of immigrants in the Nordics, basically, as many of us. Uh, I started my career in management consulting uh, in Capgemini, and three years ago, I joined a spin-off of Volvo Cars, which is called Volvo Car Mobility. It's basically in the car sharing industry, so it sounds more automotive than it actually is, because it's mostly tech uh, product that we build. Uh, even if there is a physical part to it, because of course we have cars in that service. Uh, and I'm leading the analytics team there with five data engineers, scientists and uh, analysts. Uh, and last year I co-founded a startup called Educonta, where we mentor students on consulting projects within uh, data and analytics as a side project. Uh, and for a bit more than six months now, I've, been, I've joined the uh, board of the French Tech Nordics. Uh, together with Lionel and, uh, and Frédéric. So that, that's in short about us. Uh, now, if you move on to the next slide, we're going to tell you a bit more about the, the French Tech Nordics uh, mission, objectives, and, and what we do. So uh, the first thing is that we, I mean, our 
mission is to really bring together uh, the community of uh, French and slash French speaking uh, entrepreneurs and actors interested in, in tech. Uh, and the objective is to really promote exchanges within uh, the community through the animation of this uh, Slack platform that we have and, uh, you know, uh, participate in events such as the French Tech uh, days that we have. Um, and the aim in the end is to stimulate or create sy synergies uh, between these actors. So we, as I said, we're collaborating with Business France on these initiatives. We are here to, uh, we mentor startups, uh, running presentations to share our knowledge about the Nordics market mm -hmm. and the tech industry and the, you know, the startup scene in the Nordics. And it can go from this to even sharing our network and uh, connecting startups. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I will hand over to uh, to Fred now, if you want to be more specific about maybe the, the south of the Nordics. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, well, the idea to uh, to develop and uh, foster exchange between uh, these entrepreneurs is uh, to uh, organize some small networking events um, that uh, we've been actively doing uh, before the COVID, of course, and uh, we are looking forward to restarting that soon. Um, People is welcome to join and uh, bring uh, any weird question about entrepreneurship, uh, how to develop yourself in the area, uh, because of course there are some cultural differences that need a little bit of training to step in here. So we'll be very happy to help you. And the last point I think is uh, pretty interesting is uh, usually Scandinavia has a pretty good reputation in, in terms of uh, innovation quality, uh, yeah, it's a brand in itself, which combined with uh, the French tech brand can uh, make your advertising much more efficient. So once again, you're welcome to come back, come by, uh, make you known, and we'll help you for that. And uh, then use the French tech label, the French tech logo uh, in your advertising. We are um, uh, really Help me <laughs> with the English. Uh, we, we are, what did you say, Frédéric? Sorry. Volunteers. Yeah, exactly. Like a kind of volunteers or pro bono, if you can say so. English uh, is coming before English sometimes. Yeah. We're all volunteers. So that's uh, an activity we're doing on top of uh, our regular jobs and, uh, and companies. Uh, but we'll be very, very happy to share what we can and uh, make uh, any network of entrepreneurs here. Yeah, so join us. Uh, click on the link down down uh, in the slide that uh, I'm sure Mathilde and Emily will, will share after this uh, this call. Uh, yeah, and just reach out. Uh, don't be shy. And uh, yeah, we're super happy to uh, connect with you. So I think now we're probably handing over to uh, David. David. Uh, yeah, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. So now we're going to hand it over to David Bayard. He is the deputy head of mission at the Embassy of France in Sweden, and he's going to be discussing the French-Swedish Innovation Partnership, which is uh, has a specific uh, application for tech companies. David, hello. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And can you see me? And we can see you. Because there is a, a slide, I can see a slide, but can you actually see my 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 face moving? Both. Both, okay. Yeah, we can see both. All right, great. So I'm very glad to be with you today. Um, uh, so my name is David Béard. I'm the deputy ambassador here at the French Embassy. I'm, I'm really glad we were able to organize this fourth edition of the French Tech Days in Sweden. Uh, obviously, um, for the previous years, it was a it was an afterwork, and, and it's still an afterwork. But an afterwork is always better with a, a drink in hand and a toast, which is usually made by the ambassador. But hopefully, we'll be able to do that next year. Um, so today, as an introduction, I thought it would be interesting for me to give you a sense not of what the partnership is per se, but really how we try to put flesh on the bones of these uh, bilateral institutional agreements that have been signed uh, at uh, the highest level since 2017. So uh, I will start with myself. I arrived three years ago um, in Sweden, and just a year before that, 
in November 2017, uh, it was in Göteborg, uh, there was this partnership um, for innovation and green solutions, which was signed by President Macron, who had just been elected six months before, and Prime Minister Levin. And it had um, a quite ambitious roadmap. Uh, and in, at the heart of, the, of this roadmap was the, the idea of this double um, transition, the green transition and the digital transition. And thanks to that roadmap, uh, we launched a series of working groups, of events uh, uh, at ministerial level with all relevant stakeholders uh, in se sectors such as um, um, e-health, uh, batteries, uh, green finance, uh, and and so on. And this went quite well. Um, and we consider that uh, the partnership gave kind of an added value and a, a kind of showroom to what was being done in France and Sweden with uh, uh, best practices being, being shown and also um, all stakeholders being able to connect. But that being said, uh, uh, this was just uh, the top of the iceberg, because if we look at the partnership and the different areas, uh, there are some areas where it's easier uh, to make it work at the bilateral level, um, especially when it, when, it, when it relates to big, big companies or when it relates to, um, to, uh, uh, to policies. But, but when, it, when it comes to startups, for example, it's a lot more difficult to see what exactly the added value of an embassy is and to see how really uh, French startups and Swedish startups have an interest in working together or, or, or in, in, in getting to know um, uh, the ecosystem of the, of the other. So uh, I would say that it took some time for us to, to really understand where our added value was. Um, I, uh, I can take the example, for example, even in the private sectors that uh, you didn't have CIOs in, in boards until very recently. And the same for our embassy where we didn't have uh, um, experts in, in the tech sector and, and in the digital uh, in most of our services. Now we do. Now we have a special working group within the embassy which works on, on tech and, and, and digital issues. And we were able, basically, to, to identify where uh, our, ide uh, our added value was. So uh, um, when I say that there were obstacles, those obstacles were, were both in the public sector and the, and the private sector. In the public sector, we have institutions on both sides. And these institutions have uh, um, uh, specific goals, uh, specific tools, uh, they, some things they can do, some things they cannot. So what we tried through the partnership was to uh, marry these institutions to see what they could do together. But because they don't have the same tools, it's sometimes difficult for them to have uh, joint uh, initiatives. So this takes time, and now we're getting to that. And, and for example, if I, uh, if I take um, the partnership that we launched between Vinova here and uh, BPI France, uh, now they have found some initiatives that they can launch together. But, but uh, again, because we were starting from such different places, uh, uh, Sweden and France are two ecosystems that um, uh, have been rooted in very different perceptions of how the tech sector should emerge. Uh, if I caricature, I can say that uh, I could say that uh, the idea of a startup nation here uh, is based on on uh, on 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 a narrative that kind of uh, that sometimes tend tend to omit the role of the state, whereas in France it's uh, it, it can be sometimes the opposite. Uh, it seems that uh, uh, public uh, uh, funding is everywhere, and that our startups are uh, kind of babysitted by the government, which is not the case, of course. And now. Uh, uh, we're getting to, to basically um, uh, 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 an approach that is more and more uh, convergent uh, between, between France and, set, uh, and Sweden in, in the public sphere on how you, you map and, and, and help startups and, and help, help the scale-up process, but also in terms of what kind of digital policies you need to implement. And same thing for the private sector. I would say that until a few years ago, uh, most of the 
the big uh, uh, private equity and VC uh, funds uh, uh, from the Nordics uh, uh, did, were not very present uh, in, in France and didn't see the French market as so attractive because they didn't know this market that well and they felt that it was a market where they, it was difficult to fit in. Uh, and, and so they were more active in, in the UK, in Germany, in the Nordics. Uh, funds such as Atomico, North Zone, Creandum and others uh, are now looking uh, very closely at the French startups and they see uh, the kind of uh, talents that we have in France and they see also that they, and they feel more welcome also uh, thanks to the work that has been, been done by the embassy in meeting them and trying to explain them uh, the changes that have been made in our ecosystem. Uh, another thing that helped a lot I, I would say is the European dimension of all this, because uh, at the bilateral level, uh, there, there, is, there is some interest in doing more things together, but it really makes sense when you see it from a European perspective. So I won't go into a whole uh, 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 geopolitical lecture, but uh, uh, you have seen recently many of the big uh, tech founders in Sweden make statements that I found very important. Uh, for example, uh, Niklas Zenström, uh, who actually interviewed the President Macron just two months ago uh, about the state of European tech and how important it is uh, to help the scale up of European startup and for the startups to remain European once uh, they are they have reached uh, um, a big enough size. Uh, also, Daniel Eck, uh, who pledged uh, a billion euros uh, for to help uh, European startups grow, and and this is really um, a, 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 conver a, con a convergent approach with um, uh, the goals uh, that we are tr uh, trying to uh, to reach, but also uh, uh, the goals uh, of uh, the, the the tech founders in France, the big tech founders in France. Um, also, another thing at the European uh, level, uh, which helped uh, this bilateral uh, uh, cooperation, was to push um, uh, for for new uh, European policies that will help uh, these these startups and help these ecosystems to grow. Uh, now, as you know, uh, uh, in Brussels, um, uh, we're working uh, on two big uh, regulations, uh, the Digital Service Act and the Digital, digital Market Act that will completely reshape uh, the way the tech sector is organized. Um, and also there have been some European initiatives uh, uh, which are called the IPCEI, Important Project of Common European Interest, uh, which helped a lot also a bilateral cooperation with France and Sweden being pillar, be, being, uh, becoming pillars of these IPCEIs, one on batteries, one on hydrogen, and now one on, on uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, another thing that helped um, um, was to have kind of flagship, flagship investments, flagship projects. And the fact that uh, recently uh, we had Ericsson uh, investing in a big uh, uh, R&D center uh, close to Paris in Massy uh, uh, also helped a lot because it raises a lot of interest. It makes uh, uh, Sweden, uh, it, it makes it, it, uh, it makes the government think think more about about Sweden. It, it, it puts Sweden uh, and Swedish tech companies in the picture in France. And uh, that enhances a lot uh, uh, our cooperation. Um, another thing which is also very interesting uh, is the discussion uh, that has started between France and Sweden. And this appears not in the 2017 version of the partnership, but in the upgraded version, which I contributed to, which was signed in 2019, where we injected a social dimension into the partnership, saying that digital transition is only uh, can only matter and be sustainable uh, if it has um, uh, a, a real social dimension to it, meaning that it needs to uh, be able to create jobs, to retrain all the people that will need to do this transition, and that we need to find uh, also 
purpose in what we do uh, in uh, through impact funds, through uh, uh, startups that uh, have a meaning in terms of uh, 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 green transition, in terms of, uh, of, of uh, reducing social inequalities and so on. And this is a goal that clearly France and Sweden share, and it triggered a lot of, of, of common uh, uh, projects. Uh, one example that I found interesting was that when France uh, launched uh, a year ago this app that is called Mon Compte Formation, which helps now all French um, um, uh, citizens uh, 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 to choose uh, the, the training that they want from uh, an app that is on their phone. Uh, and uh, before it was the company basically that was making the offer, now it's for the user itself to make its choices. And it raises a lot, it raised a lot of interest in Sweden because these kind of user-centric tools are exactly the kinds uh, of things that we are trying to develop uh, today in uh, a moment where uh, the question of uh, the future of democracy in the digital age basically uh, is at the core of, of, of uh, the way we think uh, about our policies. Um, uh, I, I won't be too long. I also want to mention, of course, that uh, the embassy uh, has a very small role in all this, that it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's basically a collective effort. and. When we want to help French startups or Swedish startups to to uh, to um, uh, to invest, to be to be present in both ecosystems, and when we try to, this ecosystem to get closer together, we need uh, some partners and uh, we need some uh, uh, active uh, uh, um, uh, stakeholders. And of course, the the French tech uh, is a great tool for that. So we we had. Uh, uh, the predecessors of Baptiste uh, and Lionel, uh, uh, um, uh, who started something, we helped them uh, get the label, uh, the French Tech label, which I, I hope helps. And I hope this new team uh, of the French Tech will will uh, will be able to 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 um, to uh, help help uh, dynamize the, the whole. Uh, um, ecosystem of French talents here in Sweden, help mentor also uh, the, the French startups that wants to um, that want to to set foot in Sweden, and uh, and just to say also that the embassy uh, that that the door of the embassy is always open. My door is always open if you if you have any questions and if you want to organize an event or have an initiative that you want to uh, where you need the, the help of the embassy. Uh, and uh, and I hope that uh, we will do these kinds of uh, uh, of afterworks uh, as often as possible, and if possible, uh, at the French residence uh, with a drink. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. We're going to move uh, along now with our uh, interview with Charles Berja. He's a senior VP of corporate strategy at Fingerprints, and uh, they have a partnership. Uh, with Thales. So, Charles, I'm going to show your slides now. Can you can you uh, hear me? Yes. 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 Good evening, and uh, hello everybody. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Inpan and the team. Uh, so, in a nutshell, so I'm Charles Burja. I've been in uh, in Sweden for uh, 13 years now. Uh, the first eight years in Malmö, in the south of Sweden, and I spent the uh, five years now in uh, in Stockholm. And I'm the head of strategy for uh, for Fingerprints, and Ivan asked me to give an example of a, uh, a partnership between two companies, a French company, Thales. Uh, I think everybody knows Thales, uh, big uh, CAC 40 company in uh, in the defense, aerospace, transport, digital identity. But not so many people uh, know Fingerprint, so that's the Swedish company that I represent. Uh, so in a, in a few minutes, so um, we are a company that uh, that was created in 1997, so almost 25 years old. We are in the uh, biometric market, so we provide biometric sensors, fingerprint sensors mainly, and also some uh, iris recognition uh, technology. And we have some experience. So we have shipped more than 1.2 or 1.3 billion 
fingerprint sensors uh, in the past few years. And uh, you are probably uh, touching every day one of our sensors, even if you don't know it. Uh, we work with uh, with nine out of ten of the uh, mobile phone uh, makers, basically with everybody except uh, except uh, Apple iPhone. They have their own uh, in-house solution, and we sell as well into other uh, devices like PC, Chromebooks, uh, door locks, uh, suitcases, uh, USB dongle. Basically, biometric is a, is, a, is a, an increasing part of our day-to-day -day life. And we, we kind of contribute to that. So that's who we are. And then the next slide, uh, it's about this. Uh, so what is this partnership about? So this is a, uh, a view of the uh, biometric uh, payment card. Uh, so where is uh, where is Thales here? You, you, you don't see their name, but uh, Thales is the, uh, the uh, biggest smart card manufacturer in the world. Uh, so it's a French company. They, um, it's uh, basically a legacy from Gemalto. So they bought Gemalto a couple of years ago. Uh, and they do actually uh, smart cards, including payment cards. Um, where uh, is fingerprint card contribution to this? Uh, it's the uh, fingerprint sensor that you see at the bottom right of the, of the card. So what is a, a biometric uh, payment card? Uh, basically, uh, you use it as a normal card, contactless card, uh, but instead of keeping your PIN code, uh, you put your, uh, your finger. So it's extremely convenient. You don't need to remember a PIN code. Uh, I would say it's extremely safe, so you don't have to touch the, the, the payment terminal. Uh, you can pay with whatever amount. There is no cap. Uh, and no, uh, you know, it's contactless, you don't need to touch anything. And it's, of course, very uh, secure because if you lose your card or if it is stolen, and then no one can use it. No one can use it except you it's with your finger. So that's, that's the, uh, the nature of this partnership. And of course, uh, you, you need a bank. Uh, you, you don't buy a, a card from Thales. Huh? Uh, you and I, we, we, we have a, a payment card thanks to uh, our banks. And the, uh, the first bank to, uh, to launch uh, in volume this uh, biometric payment card, it's BNP Paribas in France. So it's also very interesting to see that France is the first country uh, in the world uh, to, to benefit from this technology. I think it's very important. Uh, and, and it's also very interesting when you realize that, that the, the, the smart card was also invented uh, in France. And now the biometric smart card is uh, back to, uh, to the home, uh, homeland, if I may say. So BNP launched already. Uh, it was very successful. They launched in uh, November last year. And now they're opening these services to all their customers. There will be, of course, many other banks uh, following. Uh, you've heard of some names already uh, if you are in France, but it will also be expanded to, uh, to other countries for sure. It's only the, the beginning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles. Very interesting. We are just expecting now that uh, other banks join yes. uh, the, the, uh, the program. It's fantastic. Yes, yes, so a few questions, Charles, about your activities. What were the deciding factors for Fingerprints to choose Thales as its partner? Um. Yes, so it's, uh, I would say it's, it, it's, it's both sides and it's a partnership. So in a way, so it was an obvious, uh, obvious choice from our side. Of course, they are the number one in the world. So of course, we uh, wanted to, to, to work with, uh, with Thales, number one in the, in the payment card uh, industry. Uh, and we are working with, with uh, others as well. Um, and, and Thales decided to, to select us as well. Huh? It's, a, it's a both, both ways, uh, a Swedish company, I think mainly Mainly because of our experience, I would say we, as I mentioned, you know, we we have shipped uh, uh, more than a billion sensors, and and this market is, uh, I mean, will grow. Today it's only the beginning, and when 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 you will have millions, tens of hundreds of millions of cards uh, in circulation, I mean, it's, uh, you need you need to find a, a partner that is able to uh, to support and uh, and to deliver accordingly. So I think it was a, it's a very good, uh, yeah, very good strategic uh, collaboration between us. Absolutely. And so, so, so have there been any growing pains between the two companies, like, for example, differences between French and yeah. Swedish business cultures? 
Uh, you mean, uh, yeah, you mean like, yeah, being on time to the meeting. So I'm, I'm sure that was for uh, example. the French team <laughs> got to learn quite quickly. No, but um, more seriously, I, I know there was, it was a very smooth collaboration. Uh, I mean, both companies are, uh, are uh, you know, used to working in an international context. We, we, we work with many customers in uh, many countries, the same for Thales. So I think we have this, uh, this flexibility and this ability to, uh, to work together. So I think very, very good collaboration. Now it's only the beginning of the project, of course. Huh? So um, I, there will be um, many cards in the, in the market very, very soon. So I have great, uh, great hopes for this uh, collaboration. Okay, so um, in a more general way, uh, do you think Sweden is a promising market for French tech companies? What's your opinion? Uh, yeah, so yeah, so generally speaking, I think we and Dav, um, David talk about this uh, uh, partnership around innovation. So I totally agree that actually Sweden has a, a very strong uh, tech uh, culture. Uh, there are many names of very famous uh, Swedish tech companies. Huh? Uh, but maybe maybe to take this this kind of payment angle, I'm talking about payment now. I think there are two, maybe two examples I can give. One is this, uh, one is fintech. There are a lot of opportunities, I think, for, for fintech. Sweden, Sweden is probably, is, I think, the, the, the country in the world where, um, uh, where, where you don't have cash anymore. It's a cashless society. And, and, and this is uh, uh, allowed, you know, through, I mean, cards or mobile payment. Or, so a lot of opportunities. They are really pioneers in this, uh, in this fintech uh, 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 market. And I think that David touched about it as well. I think digital identity, I think, is another very interesting uh, uh, maybe market. In Sweden, you can, uh, you can connect from, I mean, remotely from your phone or your PC to any, any kind of services. I mean, banks, of course, but any, any public services, for instance. So there is really this kind of digitalization of the identity. And it will come across Europe. It is coming. Uh, but but again, I think Sweden is a very pioneering country uh, in, in that field. So that's two examples. There are many others, of course, uh, but maybe that's, that's the two uh, I can mention. Okay, so we need your, your advice now. What, what should French tech companies do to prepare for the Swedish market? Do you have any tips uh, that you wish uh, you had known when you first entered this market and you want to share? Uh, yeah, so I get this uh, this question uh, this question quite often, but and I, I don't want to to go into caricatures or anything like that. But I um, uh, so so I, I started 13 years ago, and I was with a French company at that time, uh, addressing uh, Swedish customers. So a little bit like what our tech uh, startup uh, friends are uh, are doing now. And uh, I mean, there there are two things I got to learn pretty quickly. Um, uh, maybe the first thing was uh, um, your, your customers, the, the Swedish companies are very casual, uh, maybe very friendly, uh, very open, but uh, we shouldn't get fooled by that because it's extremely professional. So a meeting has to, to start on time, end on time, there is an agenda, uh, there are points of actions, decisions, there is a minute of meetings with who should do what, by when, etc. So it's a, extremely uh, formal and professional, uh, even if uh, it, it looks uh, casual. So it's something I, I, I got to learn pretty fast. And, and maybe the, the second thing as well is they are ready to, to cooperate, if I may say. So um, I was used before, in, you know, to a sort of a supplier slash customer relationship in France. Uh, a very f kind of formal uh, uh, approach, but uh, I, I quickly discovered that you know my my Swedish customers were, were ready to to listen, to cooperate, and to help. Um, if 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 uh, you know if I were very transparent, very honest, very open, if I had a problem, uh, you know, don't hide, don't you know, don't, don't bullshit, if I may say, or don't assume. I was very honest and very open with uh, okay, that's the problem where I'm, I'm facing as a supplier, and they were really. Uh, are ready to help once they add all the all the data, all the input. We we sat together and and we found a, a common a common solution. So it was really a, sort of a win win uh, win win approach. That's the two things I, I really uh, I really remember and, and that I like to share when 
when I get this question. Hmm. Oh, well, thank you so much, Charles, for this information and for sharing a little bit of your secrets. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. From Sweden. Nice. So, um, and uh, good luck with your projects, of course. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank you. Thank you again so much for participating. Uh, Emily, I give you the floor. Okay, thank you, Charles. So, yes, now we're going to move into our last section of the call. It's a pitch session. So, again, we have eight startups that uh, Mathieu and I have been working with in our French Tech Days Nordics delegation. So these are eight uh, French uh, startups that are expanding into the Nordic market. Again, if you're interested in meeting any of them one on one after this call, you can reach out to Mathilde and myself and we'd be happy to set up a meeting for you. And uh, some of them will also be attending Slush in Helsinki this December. So that's another opportunity to meet up with them. So we're going to start. Um, we're doing an alphabetical order. So we'll start with Arkham. Uh, Aurelien. Yep, it's me. So, hi, I'm Aurelien from Arkham Studio, which is a gamification agency specialized in uh, HR issues. Um, so, what is gamification? It's the fact of inter integrating game mechanics and interactivity into professional tools in order to respond to issues in, in our case, in the field of human resources. So in Arkham, our serious games and the techniques we put in place makes it possible to optimize uh, many things as information retention, facilitate the transfer of knowledge, increasing skills or even team cohesion or, and onboarding. So basically, we produce tailor-made, fully internalized tool to meet uh, the needs and issues of our customers. <clears throat> Um, some of our creation can be uh, digital training, video game, virtual reality game, uh, mobile application, augmented reality, board game, or even escape game. So we can do a lot of things depending on the field we are uh, going on. Um, Arkham Studio is a 15 people team, all passionate about games. Uh, they can mix narrative, technical, game design, and even educational engineering skills. So we have a lot uh, of skills, just you know, 15 people team. Um, so to give you an example, we have created a multiplayer digital escape game for EDF to work on team cohesion during remote working, which is pretty uh, <laughs> accurate these times. Um, for another customers, we have created a serious game that is increasing basic skills to, uh, on cybersecurity. And for um, our last example, we produced a hybrid board game for car sets uh, to raise awareness on work accident for managers of large groups more in the HR uh, issues, this one. So you understood that for each project, we have a completely new creation and you'll have the tool uh, that will support you in solving your issues and that will meet all the ex expectation of the customer and the, the expectations of the end users and all this stuff thanks to gamification. Thank you. Thank you. Next up we have BDs. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Vincent and um, so I'm working for BDs in the, uh, I'm responsible of the internationalization of the solution. Um, basically BDs is a mobile training solution, so it's a platform uh, provided to companies for them to train their collaborators. Uh, what it offers is uh, a first interface for the learners available on smartphones, tablet and computers thanks to a native application but also a web front, a front web um, to, to access it on all devices. Um, it's also a very gamified environment, game-like, where you, as a learner, you will progress, earn points and so on. And the other interface is for the um, admins and trainers to have a full back office with all the tools required to create the content, communicate to the different groups, manage these, manage these groups, and follow all the statistics. So, Basically, we're very much in between the uh, content provider, I mean, not content, but more like the um, tool provider, but also as an agency to act really like a, a consulting uh, company on our technology to help the companies improve their pedagogies, improve their approach to training uh, for their collaborators. Um, 
the idea is to provide real engaging formats and new and unique ways to uh, provide the training and and move on from the uh, original, let's say, e-learning uh, strategies. Um, so yeah, uh, that was it for BDs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Delindo. Are you there? Oh, sorry. Ah, yes, okay. I'm here. Sorry. So I'm, I'm Gerardo. I'm the founder of uh, Delindo. So, um, well, our what we do at Delindo, first we work in the education market where, that is a huge market where the objective is to make sure that uh, the learners become and remain employable. And uh, so the, the main point is that uh, the professional skills that uh, everyone acquires is uh, is done the acquisition of those skills is done through the experience is very experience based at the workplace and this experience experience based learning process today is not properly designed organized uh, traced in the system in the companies or in the educational organization like uh, centers for apprenticeship or large companies and so what the, the why of our company is to significantly significantly sorry improve this system by focusing on the, on the experiential learning process and we provide can you put the next slide please uh, we provide a SaaS platform that is uh, the more on, on our subject is the most comprehensive SaaS solution and that will, where you will design organize monitor and track the skills that are developed by the learners uh, in the workplace, which is uh, the experiential learning uh, practice base that is uh, done by uh, people that are very hands on, like uh, operational people, sales people or people in the retail market or apprentice in the in the companies. So we will work with um, large companies. Uh, that needs to um, uh, teach uh, well skill their people at scale or with uh, the education system like uh, apprenticeship uh, centers or uh, professional uh, vocational high schools uh, in in the French market um, you have a third slide or is that just two no slides? okay <laughs> <It's all> okay <laughs> thank you thank you all right, next we've got DriveQuart. Edouard? Yes, hello. Yes. Can hello. you hear me? Yes. Okay, so please hold a second. I need to plug my computer. <laughs> so, hi everyone. I'm uh, Edouard Buanel, Business Development Manager at uh, DriveQuart. Please could you switch? Yes, thanks. Uh, so DriveCount provides telematics solutions to insurers and mobility players. So traditional telematics often requires to plug devices to cars like OBD dongles or black boxes that are expensive and offer a poor user experience. At DriveCount, we decided to use the most simple but powerful device, the smartphone. We leverage the smartphone as a sensor to collect and analyze mobility data to display it directly in our client applications. Indeed, our solutions help to build win-win relationships between insurers and policyholders. On the one hand, we provide insurers with a unique risk assessment capability based on real driving behavior. We provide driving scorings like safety, eco-driving, phone distraction, speeding, actual mileage, with different layers of contextualization. We also help them to reduce claims operations cost with first notifications of loss and crash reports. On the other hand, for end users, this technology enables fair pricing, understandable, based on real risk and car usage. It also improves their claims journey with automated crash detection, immediate assistance, and simplified paperwork. Eventually, we improve risk prevention efficiency through gamification and coaching features. So how can our customers integrate our solutions? Directly in their apps, thanks to software development kits, in other words, an SDK, their apps then becomes seamlessly telematics. 
We can also provide them with a turnkey white label app if they want to go to market from scratch. To conclude, and uh, please go on the, the next slide, thanks. Uh, DriveCon is part of Fair Connect Group, which operates more than 500,000 users worldwide. We have the chance to be partner of TA to Every in the Nordics. It's a well-known IT company that provides digital services to insurers, and our technology is pre-integrated in their platforms. Hence, it adds an additional collaboration frame possibility. So thank you for your time and uh, enjoy this pitch session. Merci. Thank you. Merci. Next, we have Foxy Nerds. Hi. Thanks for taking the time to chat. My name is Frédéric. I'm the co-founder of Foxy Nerds, the one and only influencer marketing platform for B2B leaders. According to Gartner, B2B buyers spend more than 50% of their time with third party, just like bloggers or research institutes, versus only 16% with B2B vendors like you and your competitors. So, to be sure to keep buyer attention during the small amount of time they allocate to you, you need to identify the most influent people in their ecosystem and work closely with them. For that purpose, please, ne next slide. For that purpose, we created Foxiners, a SaaS platform which allows you to deploy a straightforward, influence your marketing strategy we articulate it on three pillars. First, an all-in-one toolbox perfectly integrated to your acquisition workflow that allow you to manage all campaign actions. A database of 300,000 B2B experts and leaders active in 43 countries and more than 60 categories, which use their own reputation and personal brands to push yours. And a risk-free business model to evaluate the potential of influencer marketing program on your business. In other words, with Foxy Nerds, you only pay for concrete actions with influencers, not for the right to use a tool. At Foxy Nerds, our target is to scale your growth with you and to boost your business performance to the level you expect. Thanks a lot, and feel free to ask if you have any questions. Thank you. Next, we have Ledger. Hello, everybody. So I'm Antoine Allo. I'm sales director at Ledger Enterprise Solution. Uh, we are a, a leading company in cybersecurity applied to blockchain applications. I guess you are all familiar with Bitcoin, and uh, you may have noticed that a whole new financial industry and new asset class emerge with digital assets. Uh, with them, new operational risks uh, emerge as well because uh, the nature of digital assets is different from traditional assets. Uh, for example, you have to own private and public keys, so you have to manage that. Um, the transactions are also immutable on the blockchain, so it's another risk if you make a mistake. And the openness of the network brings new challenges when it comes to transparency and governance. Next slide, please. So I'm part of the B2B business unit of Ledger. We created the best custody technology platform on the market. It's called the Ledger Vault, and it enables financial institutions to be compliant, secure, and scalable in the crypto space. It gives them full control over their keys and governance, so it's very uh, intuitive as an experience, and it is very affordable as well. So if you want to secure digital assets for your business, or if you know financial institutions looking at investing into crypto, please reach out to me and we will secure their assets. Great. Thank you. Next, we have Nurio. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, so I'm Paul, business developer at Nerio. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of this blue product that you can see on your screen, uh, Ned. Marc-Henri, the founder of Nerio, was a student in an engineering school in industrial robotics. And he realized that he had only very few opportunities to actually manipulate industrial robots. He quickly discovered that this was a problem faced by all the students around him. 
and finally all universities around the world. Generally, institutions only buy one or two units of industrial robots over several years, and robots quickly become obsolete. Why? There are two reasons for this. The first reason is the price of this equipment, several tens of thousands of euros. And the second reason is the accessibility in terms of programming. The robots have only one programming language, which is not accessible to all teachers depending on the level and specialty of courses. Industrial robots are oversized for higher education. They are too expensive, 30,000 euros and more, and difficult to program. Emilio or Mathilde, you can switch off the, the slide. This is why we have created um, a small industrial like robot, accessible thanks to its price, 2,500 euros, and the ease of programming in different languages, from the simplest to the most complicated one. This open source robot will simulate the environment of industry 4.0 and accompany the willingness of many countries wishing to reindustrialize. High schools, um, universities, research centers, and even vocational training centers can therefore equip themselves with the whole ecosystem we have created around the robot. A vision set, a conveyor belt, curriculum, demonstrators, and so on. The robot can be taken from one classroom to another to teach different subjects, such as um, computing science, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, machine learning, and so on. We have already worked with some well-known uh, customers, such as Ericsson, the Deutsche Bahn, Amazon, and more recently, Coca-Cola around these topics. Um, that's it for Neil. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Thank you. And finally, we have Wild Immersion. Hold on. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to unmute myself. That, oh, no worries. That, that'll work better. Uh, <laughs> so hello, everybody, and thank you for, for being here. Uh, my name is Rodolphe Boyer, and I'm uh, the sales manager of Wild Immersion. Um, so I guess I'm, I might be uh, teaching you something right now, but we are living, uh, we're right in the middle of an environmental crisis. Maybe you've heard about it. Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, what you may not know uh, is that this uh, environmental crisis uh, mm -hmm. related to biodiversity is the, is the sixth biggest mass extinction event uh, in the history of our planet. The last one uh, was the disappearance of dinosaurs. Uh, so, we're really in a, in a crucial time and it's, uh, it's very important to have people reconnect with nature and understand the environmental issues that need to be addressed. And so this is why uh, Wild Immersion was created. So what is Wild Immersion? Well, actually, if you can see my, uh, my screen, uh, not the presentation, this is Wild Immersion. So these are VR goggles that allow us to create immersive experiences about wildlife and teleport people into uh, natural habitats uh, to share an intimate moment with their favorite animals. Uh, so we don't just uh, entertain people by teleporting them into nature. We also try to educate them about uh, what animals are going through, what are the challenges that need to be answered, and uh, and we also try to foster donations to conservation projects, uh, mainly those of our partners. So, um, where can you find Wild Immersion, and uh, and what type of uh, public do we uh, do we address? Uh, we're mostly into zoos, aquariums. Thank you. That was the perfect timing. Uh, we're mostly into zoos, aquariums, malls, uh, and any other place that needs to uh, uh, offer uh, nice, entertaining, and educative experiences to their visitors. Uh, but recently, we also started uh, going online, uh, working with Orange and uh, other platforms that are uh, sh uh, showcasing VR around the world. Um, to uh, to create an immersive content, we've created 15 movies. Uh, with more than 100 animals from around the world, but we've also created applications uh, that that help mediate uh, the message and uh, that give uh, nice educative games and experiences to uh, to our visitors. Um, of course, this is an experience that's for families. It's uh, very well suited for children. And the reason we're here uh, in the Nordics right now is because we've actually made a movie about uh, your beautiful wildlife, uh, which has been uh, very well received. And we know that uh, Nordic people usually are both very well versed in terms of technology and that they love their environment. Uh, and that's why it just makes perfect, perfect sense for us to, to be here and to, uh, to try to showcase our beautiful movies to, uh, to your population and to your uh, citizens. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice evening.
Thanks so much. So we're arriving up on 6 p.m. Uh, we can still have a couple of questions if people um, have any. Uh, to try and make it interactive, we were hoping people could uh, raise their hand on Teams. There's a little uh, option on the taskbar on top if you want to raise your hand and then remember to unmute yourself and uh, turn on your camera if you can. Otherwise, uh, we might have some questions in the chat. I've looked mm -hmm. and there's none. You've been very discreet tonight. Um, we are not so many, so uh, I bet if anyone has any questions for uh, our companies or uh, the French Tech or the um, embassy or us, um, do not um, hesitate to just uh, feel free to raise your voice. Um, or otherwise it's six and as we are living in Sweden, we can wrap up. As you want. Don't leave me alone here. Everybody. Ah, uh, I have someone raising his hand. We have. And is it you me? can't. Or is it someone else? Oh, it's Betsy. Um, oh, is it's it? here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can ask a question. I always have many questions, so and I can ask a generic one uh, for any any startup that would like to answer, but it's it's I mean it's a simple one. Uh, it's basically if uh, I mean from your perspective, from your startup perspective, what are the biggest opportunities slash challenges uh, related to the to the Nordics? I, I can take the word if you want. <laughs> Um, for Arkham Studio, we tried to focus on a country that was already supportive with the new technologies and that already knew some of the innovation in HR uh, issues, uh, which is pretty evolved in northern uh, countries. So this was the, the biggest point of interest we had in northern uh, countries. And then for the challenge, it, it also represents the challenge because they already know some things and they already have some uh, new technologies and innovation for um, a lot of types of uh, issues that they have, that they're having. So these are maybe the, the two biggest uh, points on our uh, export uh, issues and also we try to generally export because we have now some solution that can be worked uh, on fully um, digital so even in France we had some uh, customer that we worked for like Carsat uh, uh, that we never saw <laughs> so we did everything just uh, in digital As, so yeah every every kind of um, solution that we can uh, create can be can be made even with people across the world so it was an easy way for us to to export our products cool thanks Can we just, uh, I mean, I can, I could also answer uh, Baptiste's uh, question, so, so I, I'll just go ahead. You can answer both, though, if you want. You can answer, yes, I, 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 answer both. Uh, so first, I mean, the, the, the biggest uh, opportunity for us in the Nordics, I think, is the, um, uh, the general uh, education level of the population. You know, everybody here is very, uh, they know technology and they know the environment and they're usually uh, quite uh, invested in protecting it. Uh, you're all very progressive and you you are focused to the future and uh, and I think that's why we we want to work with you so much and the second reason I, I said so is because uh, um, the the nature in the Nordics is quite uh, unique uh, uh, and I think working there would be also a nice opportunity in terms of production for us now the biggest challenge is the a bit of the same as uh, Aurélien said uh, you have a very um, uh, well-connected population that knows VR content uh, and that will obviously be a bit more uh, uh, judgmental or a bit more, have a bit more expectations in terms of the content we provide. 
Uh, but that's actually nice because we are very confident in what we do. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so regarding the, the second question, Aurélie, uh, so yeah, we, we've had the chance to work in Finland. Uh, we've actually opened uh, a world immersion in Finland a few years ago uh, with one of our partners there. Uh, and we had a space uh, in a hotel in Stock uh, in uh, Helsinki, uh, which I would have to make a bit of research to find you the name of the hotel, but uh, I could give you my email and, and, and talk about it further if you're interested. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I see Hi. from Midis. Raise his hand. Yes, I did. Do you hear me? I think my computer is lagging a little bit. No, we hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Baptiste, for the, the, the question. It's actually it's a, actually an interesting thing to, to think about. What, what's the opportunity? What are the challenges? I, I think for us, the opportunities would be that, in our understanding, uh, the Swedish market is quite similar to the French one in, the, in terms of, well, it's a corporate culture, matured corporate culture. Uh, where you can find big companies, where you find people working pretty much the same way as we do in France. So I think the, the, the model would be similar as to what we've implemented in French in that way. And there's another thing that comes to mind with this opportunity is that in the same way, the companies in Sweden tend to have a aging population. So the whole skill management, the whole knowledge management questions come into mind. And a solution like BDs and the way we implement the different pedagogies uh, could mean a lot to a company that needs to proactively act on keeping that knowledge, maintaining it or passing it on to their different collaborators. So that's something we would be keen to work with. And I think it would be one of the approaches that we may um, intend to take. The challenges. Apart from the language, now we still need to figure out whether that's going to be a barrier or not, knowing that in the Nordics, people are quite keen on speaking English anyway, but I don't know, is it going to be something that's going to be a break for us, not having at the moment someone that does speak the language or not? I mean, that question comes uh, for all the countries. Other than that, it's just to figure out, the, the other real challenge is to figure out how budgets are allocated in terms of training within the companies, who's got the keys to that budget, how do you unlock it, how does it work? That's the kind of question that we're trying to figure out as well. So, yeah, thank you for that question, quite interesting. Cool, thanks for your answers as well, it's super interesting uh, to, to get your perspectives on, on, uh, on that. Thank you. So. I see a question for me and Ledger. Are the Nordics market a crypto friendly one compared to the French one? Well, <laughs> good question. I mean, uh, on the business side, I would say that France has a, uh, an ambiguous position with blockchain in general. We see initiatives coming from the government to support it, and at the same time, a governance a regulatory framework which is slowing down the innovation. So I would say, yeah, this is my view on France and the Nordics. Um, I've been very well received by all the companies managing cryptos. Uh, what I see compared to other European or Middle East and African markets is that they are very um, passionate first about uh, the opportunities coming from this new class of asset, but also very professional on the way to manage it. And this is why I think we are well received at, uh, with Ledger. I mean, the solution is, is well known for uh, to, to have great performances. Uh, but yeah, this is really a, a good good market, I would say. And all, all the partners we work with today have experienced a strong growth in the past uh, in the last few years already. So yeah, I mean, relatively to the size of the countries, uh, I would say it's crypto friendly. Well, if we don't have any more questions, I think we can wrap it up. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we've um, made a recording. So uh, 
we can share this with anyone who might have been interested but couldn't participate the whole time or that uh, maybe you know someone who wanted to participate but couldn't um, and we'll also share the presentation with you all so yeah. you have our contact information and uh, uh, thanks again and hopefully we'll be seeing you in again in another uh, French Tech Nordics event soon. Let's think across that it will be in, in physics this time like like David said like yes. it will be soon over I hope. Fingers and, crossed. Uh, yeah by the meantime take care of yourself we've lost uh, some people but you're mute, Mathilde. Oh. But thanks, everyone. Uh, that was super <laughs> fun to uh, having you. And uh, yeah, I guess you have a good uh, evening. And we talk mm -hmm. very soon. Feel free to, to reach out. Bonne soirée, à la prochaine. Bonne soirée, Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Thomas?